we can start educating everyone uh, about the call for papers and how to submit a winning abstract. Um, I've got Brendan here on the line with me from the Drupal Association, and he is helping me with Q&A. So as we go through this, um, this webcast, feel free to use Q&A to ask questions, and he'll interrupt me if I don't see it. Um, and uh, we have a great list of people here from all kinds of different companies. Some names I have known for many years and some that are new to me. So um, all of you welcome and thank you for participating in DrupalCon and helping to make our event so educational and helpful by providing really great content. And hopefully this, this webcast will, will help out. So just a little bit about me for those that don't know me. Uh, my name is Megan Sanicky. I'm the COO. Uh, I oversee all of our community and revenue programs here and make sure that we are really on track to serve our mission, which is keeping the community together and focused to make great software. Um, and that's me in the middle, if you couldn't guess. And at any time, if you want to reach out to me with questions, that's my email address. And uh, you can also tweet questions to the Drupal Association. <clears throat> We're always happy to help. Um, I am going to record this webinar and send the recording out to everyone along with the slides. You're gonna see there's just a choke full of information in here with links that give you all the source information. And so it's gonna be helpful, I think, for you to have these slides. And so I'll send that out to you um, right after the call. So today, uh, for an agenda, we're gonna cover a couple areas. Um, we're gonna talk about what is the ses session selection process, uh, how to write a winning abstract, and I have some special tips for sponsors. Um, and then I want to take a closer look at DrupalCon New Orleans and, and the tracks that are available and the types of content that the track shares are looking for. And then we'll talk about how you can just pass go and bypass that community process if you just are, you, you can buy a session and get on stage in a different way. They're all great options um, and I'll cover all of them. Hey, Megan, we've had a request come in to use uh, presenter mode, so it's a little bigger on screen. Sure, I can do that. Great, hopefully that's better. That's beautiful, thank you. Good, okay. So diving in to about the session selection. So you can see for anyone that hasn't been to a DrupalCon, this is what a typical session room looks like and get a podium at the front and some support from tech, and off you go with your slides. So uh, DrupalCon New Orleans will be the first opportunity um, for submitting uh, your abstract. The event is from May 9th to the 13th, and that Monday is when we hold training and summits. Tuesday through Thursday is when we have keynotes and sessions. So this is when your sessions would be running. Um, we do uh, have sprints on Friday where the community comes together and works on the project. For DrupalCon New Orleans, the call for papers closes February 29th at right before midnight, New Orleans local time. That's really important because we don't accept late submissions. And I'm going to encourage everyone to get started on this process of creating your abstract as soon as we get off the call. So just take advantage of the whole month. Uh, we have lots of resources that'll help you. Um, the sessions, as I mentioned, there's community selected sessions and there are paid sessions. So I'll go through both, both options. So I want to focus on the community selected sessions first um, because that is where the bulk of the opportunities are. So we have 13 tracks in total and uh, each track has so many sessions associated with it. They uh, combine to 143 sessions. So that kind of just gives you a scope of how many, how many slots there are. There's a lot of people that submit. Um, so sessions are 60 minutes long and we do record them and post them up on YouTube where uh, they get thousands of more views from people around the world. We have different formats that you can use. You can present alone, you can co-present with another expert or you can host a panel. And we do offer speakers a free ticket to DrupalCon, one speaker per session. 
I want to call out that um, our session selection process is run by the community. We do have a community uh, staff member named Amanda Gonzer who uh, project manages this whole session selection process, but the ones that are the real experts picking the tracks and the session themes and the actual sessions are community members and they do it purely as a volunteer service. We have two to three volunteers assigned to each track and they are experts in that tracks focus. They are the ones that define the themes. They decide what are the kinds of uh, content that our community needs to be educated on. So they are the ones that identify the types of sessions that we need to talk about. And as they go through this process, they receive over 500 sessions. So that's a ton of volume to go through as volunteers. And it's also important for you to understand how many session submissions we receive, knowing that we only have 143 slots to fill. So there's a lot of competition out there, which is why it's really important to know how to write that winning abstract. Uh, so when the volunteers receive all these 500 plus session submissions, uh, they have two weeks to go through them all, they rank them, and they select sessions. Um, if you're looking for more in-depth explanations, I did provide this link, which you'll receive when you get the slides. But it's obviously uh, a pretty big job, but it's really great to have Drupal experts in charge of picking the Drupal content. Um, and so I want to drill into some pro tips on how you can get your session selected. And this is kind of like, Generic, this is for anyone, whether you're a sponsor or not a sponsor. Uh, these are all important tips to follow. So one of the first things is who you are as a, as a session submitter matters. Uh, the track chairs are looking for speakers who have proven speaker experience um, and that they are known in the Drupal community as an expert. And so speaking at camps and showing um, that you have spoken at camps is a good way to demonstrate this. Maybe you've spoken at other conferences, other industry events. Uh, it'd be great to highlight that in your submission. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this if you are not known in the Drupal community because maybe you work for a software vendor or you work for a hosting company, um, but uh, you have a lot of speaking experience in Drupal knowledge, you just maybe haven't gone to a camp yet. So we'll talk about how to uh, work through that. The reason I encourage you to start the writing process now is that uh, you want to go through a um, kind of like an editing process and really use the next couple weeks before the deadline to get feedback from different people. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the event site and you want to read about the different tracks that we offer and the and the track chairs put on the pages what kinds of sessions they're looking for. So they're very clear about the kind of content that they want. And so I have a link here that takes you right to all the tracks and we're gonna go through that um, at a high level later on in the presentation. The track chairs are also there to answer your questions. So if you see a track and the session descriptions that they're looking for, you might still have some questions of, is this a good idea or how can I make this idea better? The track chairs want to hear from you. So reach out to them right away and get their feedback. Again, um, I have a link in here that will take you right to the page that has uh, a way for you to contact them. And as you're writing, you uh, want to make sure you're telling a story, something that really will resonate with um, your audience. Um, you definitely don't want to do pitches. So if you know a software vendor, hosting company, don't just talk about your software. Uh, I think Drupal shops, those are that are those of you that are on the line know this already. Uh, but you really want to say like, what is the problem, and what is the solution? And do it in a way that's telling a story. And make sure that you are really um, clear in your abstract who this uh, session is for. Is it for a technical audience, a beginner technical audience? Uh, and what are the takeaways? What are they going to learn from you? And um, then just make sure it's proofread. Like anything, you know, quality matters. And there are a few other tips, but those are some of the really important ones I wanted to call out. Uh, but if you go to this link, you'll see there's some other really good ideas to, um, to follow. Um, 
And so as you write up your abstract, and hopefully you've talked to the track chairs to get some ideas, you can go to other experts out there, ask them for feedback. You can even ask your account manager if someone at the Drupal Association can give you feedback. Uh, our CTO, Josh Mitchell, has offered this before in the past to people. And then when you're ready to submit, go ahead and post this online. And this is another reason why you want to do this, uh, want to submit sooner than later, is that the community is going to give you feedback. And if they start asking questions or you get something that mm, you might want to drill into, you have a chance to go and edit your abstract and improve it before the deadline. So again, when you do submit, make sure you submit on time. We don't have exceptions for late submissions. And the link I've provided here is uh, just the, the link to where you go to submit your session. So I'm going to go out of presentation mode. Oh, I think it works. Great. I want to show you an example of a winning abstract. Um, and I'm sorry, Amanda couldn't be here. She's actually in India setting up DrupalCon Asia. But she said this was a really good example of an abstract that you uh, should look to. So this is, was pr provided, uh, the session was called Front End Ops. And the reason it, it's great is that um, the first thing that it talks about is um, the problem question. Um, you know, it talks about how websites need to be fast and how front end is most often the real bottleneck. And the question is, how do you keep things humming and get all of your work done at the same time? Right. So this is just a problem that can resonate with people in the front end, front end developers. And then it goes into the real solution is front end ops. And it talks about what front end ops is and how this session is going to cover it. Uh, and what you're going to learn from this session. It goes into how, uh, who the session is for, um, and that it's going to be technical in nature, and it tells, it explains what the attendees will need to know to have a good foundation to understand this talk. Additionally, uh, this presenter uh, provided slides and examples of past speaking opportunities around this topic so that you could see that they are an expert and were good speakers. Um, and so it's, it's very tight and was really well received. Um, you could even see that there were comments added when it was submitted. It was considered cool and looks great. And ah, uh, this is the nerdy shit. So if you get those kinds of comments, you know you're in really good shape. But maybe you're gonna have comments that say, what about this, what about that? And that's where you can go back in and uh, make some tweaks to make it stronger. So in short, just make sure it has the who, what, where, when, why uh, of writing. I'm gonna switch back over. So there are some special things I wanna call out for sponsors when you are writing your abstract. So uh, I mentioned that the track chairs are looking for experts, specifically those that are known in the, in the Drupal community. And like I said, maybe you were for a software company that has an integration with Drupal. Maybe you're a hosting service uh, that's used often to power Drupal sites. Um, you, you certainly don't want to um, lose an op opportunity because you're not known in the Drupal community. Um, so if you haven't been doing talks uh, at camps and things like that, that is okay. What we do recommend is that you partner with someone that's known in the community. Maybe it's your Drupal customer, maybe it's someone at a Drupal shop that's done an implementation with your module. Um, there's lots of ways to partner and to have a really strong speaking team. Uh, and, and so, if you don't know how to find those people, I do recommend you reach out to your account manager. We have a program called Partner Connect where we can do some research, kind of uh, understand what you're trying to achieve and who would make a really strong co-presenter with you. And we'll do the introductions to that person and you help you um, see if there's any, well, any there there, if they would like to co-present with you and what that story would be that you want to share together. Uh, and so I have a link in here about Partner Connect. It's a super lightweight program, but it's really just a service to help you connect with the right people in the community. And 
it expands much, much further than just DrupalCon. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to point out too is um, when you are as a sponsor, especially a software vendor or a hosting company, just again, you want to make sure you're, it's not a pitch. You want to tell a story, and what I recommend is a case study. So this is, again, where it'd be great if you have a joint customer, maybe um, you can bring in that joint customer to tell the story with you. Uh, you can work with a developer that implemented a solution for a client and have them come in with you. But it's really important that you tell a story that will resonate and educate. And um, I would say you want to tell a case study about what the client's problem was, how you and your, your service or product, along with Drupal, solved that pain point. And then you can drill in as you need to, if you need to talk about that specific module and anything that might be a developer might want to know. Um, you know, you want to get away from demos, but if the demo really does help your story, make sure it is told or is shared within the context of a case study. I think that's really important. And again, if you need some brainstorming ideas, please reach out to the account managers. Reach out to me. We're happy to help you brainstorm. Megan, we've had a question come in here uh, asking, during submitting the abstract, they want to know whether the slides are mandatory or can they be added after the session is submitted? Uh, you can add anything after the session is submitted. Uh, I would, you know, it just has to be there um, uh, before the deadline because once the deadline passes, everything's locked down and that, wh whatever you've provided is what is being um, reviewed by the track chairs. Great. Thank you. And we've had one more come in uh, asking if we've considered ways to involve the greater community aside from just having experts to determine which submissions get selected. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, we have historically used um, community members, but we are reaching out. For example, the PHP track, we are bringing in an expert from uh, PHP Architect. Um, so uh, that is definitely someone from, from the outside. And I'll have to look to see if we are expanding that. I do know we have a track provided by Sensio Labs and getting the um, Symphony experts to come in to uh, select content on that track. Um, but that's a, that's a really good question. I'll look to see if, I, I, think if, I think it's always smart to bring in outside perspective. Great, that's it so far. Okay, good. Okay, so DrupalCon New Orleans, the call for papers is open. It closes February 29th. The um, track chairs have chosen their tracks and they have um, identified the types of sessions that they are looking for. Um, so these are the tracks. Uh, it ranges from business, coding and development, core conversations, DevOps, Drupal.org, front end, Horizons, PHP, project management, site building, Symphony, and UX. N Many of these apply to the audience today. So I'm going to go over them at a high level. These are the ones that are the uh, community selected tracks. We also have the sponsor track called Business Showcase. Uh, I'm going to save that to, to the end. There's a pretty straightforward um, path for that one. So let's talk just a little bit about business tracks. Um, the business and strategy track is it is for Drupal shops, but it's also for those that are in the digital experience business. So it's much, for much more than just Drupal shops. Um, these sessions are non-technical in nature, and the track chairs are looking for sessions that range from recruiting and hiring, company culture, sales and marketing, digital strategy, products and service offerings. And the track chairs are also looking for sessions that are going to share a real relevant experience that has a good, you know, a good story-driven narrative. So they definitely are looking for these kinds of case studies and stories um, uh, for the best practices that you want to share. Um, they are definitely looking for ideas outside of the core Drupal ecosystem. So if you have experience maybe working in another company, um, or you are a company that's not in the Drupal community in the sense that you're a software vendor that um, serves many different communities. 
you have a great perspective. And so I think that you could really leverage that when you uh, tell your story and submit a session in this area. Another thing to know about uh, the business track is they are looking for sessions given by one to two people. They prefer that over a panel. So something to keep in mind. Again, all of this information and even more information is found on the uh, the website, and so you'll have links to all of that. I'm just going to give you the highlights. Um, please note on the upper right-hand corner the track leads. Um, I'll have the track leads here for um, each of the tracks I go over. And again, I just encourage you to reach out to them sooner than later to get some guidance on the on the session ideas that you have. Okay, the next track is coding and development. And um, well, as you know, Drupal 8 is now released. So the coding and development track wants to definitely focus on Drupal 8. And specifically, it wants to educate developers on the latest techniques and tools that are going to help developers make great projects. Uh, track chairs are looking for sessions that cover best practices for coding and debugging in Drupal 8, Drupal migrations, upgrading contribs to Drupal 8, how to work with other frameworks and technologies. And they're looking for shared experience around high performance and large scale development. So I'll apply some obvious candidates there. The DevOps track. Um, well, this is obviously a pretty popular topic. Um, I've been seeing a real rise in interest in this area. Um, the DevOps track chair is looking for sessions that cover a wide range of experiences um, associated with DevOps. And they're also looking for people to share their experiences um, in implementing DevOps. So the knowledge and skills that people will need to, to know to, to embrace DevOps in their organization. Um, so they want attendees to learn how, uh, how to help developers and operations work better together. And that can range from automating processes to creating dashboards. So there's just a lot that can be um, focused on here. I think there's, this is an area where if you're uh, providing a third-party software that helps in DevOps. This is a great place for you to educate our community. If you are a Drupal shop that's embraced this, uh, this is a great time to share your expertise and what maybe moving to a DevOps practice looks like. Lots, I think there's just a lot of room to educate the community here as a sponsor. The next one is the front end track. Um, I showed you an example of a session from front end already. Um, but this year, let's see, the track chairs are looking for sessions that answer the question, how can developers keep up and marry the best front end practices with the best of what Drupal offers? That's nice and, and broad. Uh, so specifically what they're looking for are sessions that talk about the technologies and procedures that front end developers use today. And that can range from preprocessors build automation, JavaScript and CSS architecture, new template systems and client-side applications, and you know, much more. Um, you know, if you have experience around um, building a, a headless Drupal site, this would be a great track for you to share. I think everyone is really interested about this, even just with Dries' recent blog post about headless Drupal. There's just tons of energy here, and people are very hungry for that topic. Horizons is a new track that we've just added to our um, selection of tracks. And it's, I think, one that all of our sponsors have a way of contributing to. Um, it is designed to help us think big and to really look at the edges of Drupal and to, to talk about what that means. So it's, it's, very inter, it's a very interdisciplinary track. Um, it's about big ideas that really just don't fit in all the other tracks, um, really um, kind of forward and future focused. So track chairs are looking for sessions that focus on things like where front end meets back end and where the publishing platform meets application framework. And it also focuses on publishing content to a distributed, decoupled, multi-channel web. Uh, so there's just um, lots of great um, opportunities here to share your ideas. Maybe um, you have even started testing in some of these areas and want to talk about that. Maybe you have gone to other industry events or seen trends in the industry and would like to share that and explain where you think Drupal can fit in that. 
I definitely see that with um, kind of like Internet of Things and how Drupal can power the can publish the content behind that. Um, lots of lots of great opportunities here to um, to explore. Uh, another track is the PHP track. It's obviously pretty popular because of the Drupal 8 release. Uh, this track is going to focus on making attendees better PHP developers um, because, therefore, they will be better Drupal developers. Uh, the track chairs are looking for intermediate to advanced sessions that obviously relate to PHP development, software development as a whole, rather than just Drupal specific. And uh, concepts and techniques that they want discussed here should reference Drupal use cases as much as possible. Uh, so for those that have lots of experience in PHP or serving other PHP communities, this is a great track for you to share your insights and kind of uh, break us out of the, the Drupal um, echo chamber and just really expand our knowledge here. Another track is project management. Uh, I think this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the track chairs are looking for sessions that focus on the practices, principles, and tools that help make projects run better and faster. Um, so session, sessions should be tailored to project managers and directors, scrum masters, and other project management profiles. I think that um, Drupal shops have tons of experience here, can talk about what's worked, what hasn't worked, how they can scale business through really well-managed projects. Um, I think that software vendors that offer project management tools can really share best practices. Obviously, you don't want to talk about your tool and how that necessarily helps. Um, you can highlight that, but you want to really um, talk about the best practices um, that your tools support. <clears throat> we have a little multi-part question here that's come in if you have a moment. Okay, sure. All right. So. Uh, Someone's asking if you have any guidance about whether proposing a topic that addresses multiple tracks is a good thing or a bad thing in the eyes of the selection committee. And they're wondering, is it better to be super focused on a given track or to appeal as many track audiences as possible? Oh, that's, that's good to know. Um, well, let's see. When you submit for a track, um, I think you... Uh, how do I answer this? So if you submit for a track, you want to be really clear who the audience is for. So definitely be um, very specific. Don't try to go too broad. Don't write as if it could be accepted by multiple tracks. What happens is if someone, let's say you write for PHP, uh, the PHP track, and uh, the track lead says, oh, this is, this is very good, but it really actually doesn't fit mine. It's much better for the code and developer track. Then uh, that track chair will pass the submission over to the other track chair and say, I'd like you to consider this one. Um, so I hope, hopefully that answers part A. And then part B is, it is absolutely fine to write as, as many submissions as you want. Um, and again, just be very clear that this is for this track and I'm covering this topic and it's for this audience. Um, and again, if you have questions that maybe have multiple ideas um, for one specific track, reach out to that track chair, and they will give you guidance of the best way to submit. Great. Thanks, Megan. You bet. OK, so we're almost done. Um, and again, there's, this is a lot of copy. Um, and I specifically put a lot of copy on these pages so that when I email it to you, you can read them. <laughs> um, but they're also all on the website. Um, but the site builder track is, I think, well, it may not be obvious for everyone. Um, so we have a great, um, you know, uh, a great lion's share of our attendees who are non-technical, and they build Drupal websites. And that's one of the beautiful things about Drupal is you don't need to be technical to put all the Lego pieces together to create that amazing website. Um, but they do need training to know how to make the best website possible. So track chairs really are looking for sessions um, that uh, can highlight different modules, um, different ways to add features, um, new ways to approach um, site building, so best practices. And I think this is a really, I think every one of our sponsors can really contribute here 
So a Drupal shop, obviously, a lot of you are building modules for clients and contributing them back. So you might want to highlight something that's really new that a site builder should consider um, for their clients. And um, if you are a software vendor with a integration to Drupal, then you can highlight what's new with that module. Maybe you've upgraded to Drupal 8 and it can help in a very specific way um, to solve a client's problem. So uh, I think this is an area where all of our sponsors should really consider submitting. And then the last one I wanted to highlight is uh, the user experience track. Um, so obviously this track is for UX practitioners. Um, the track chairs are looking for sessions that cover a whole range of, of topics from best practices uh, for strategy and content creation all the way to design and development. Um, and so um, I'm trying to think what might apply most. I think Drupal shops probably have the a lot of experience here, best practices. I think a case study of what you've done with a client, what worked, maybe some pitfalls, maybe all the things that didn't work and what to watch out for. Those would be some really good topics uh, to cover here. So those are the tracks for New Orleans um, that are managed by the community process. Uh, and if there aren't other questions, then I will just go to the last type of track, which is our um, business showcase, and that is uh, the sponsored sessions. We have a bit of a follow-up uh, to the question about uh, involving community in the selection process. Okay. Uh, and the, it was more asking if the greater Drupal community, i.e., you know, conference attendees or everyone with the Drupal.org account, uh, might be involved in the selection process. Oh. Uh, no, this is not um, a big community process. It is the track chairs who are deciding on which sessions get selected. The track chairs being community members. Oh, yes. Well, they are community members, right. But we don't open it up for community voting. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay. If there are not other questions, then we'll just go into the business showcase. So the business showcase is a track that runs throughout the whole conference at the same times as all the other sessions. Um, in the past, uh, a sponsor would be able to buy this by buying a sponsor package. Uh, a diamond gets 60 minutes, a platinum gets a 30 minute slot on the stage, and gold would get a 15 minute lightning talk. Uh, any of our sponsors can level up and um, pay for additional time on the stage. It's obviously, um, the slots are limited, so they do go quickly. Uh, so if that is a path that you want to take, I recommend that you talk to your account manager right away because they are filling up. But there are a few slots left. Um, the one thing I want to point out is, uh, as you notice with all of the community tracks, there is not a track for case studies, uh, which is really popular and is what our attendees um, really value. And um, and uh, it's a great it's a great focus for our business showcase. So we are asking anyone who speaks in the business showcase track to submit a case study. Um, it also will help sponsors um, really tell that story that we know resonates the best with our audience and will really attract um, people to come and, and listen, to you, listen to you speak. So again, if you don't want to go through the community process, that's OK. I highly recommend it. Um, you can do that and buy a session. But either way, if this is the path you'd like to go, please talk to your account manager now or shoot me an email, and we'll uh, let you know what's available. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, just to summarize, it's important to start now, know the tracks and the uh, types of content that the track chairs are looking for. You want to reach out right away to the track chairs and ask for their input on your ideas. And be sure to reach out to other experts. They're always happy, you know, it's the open source ethos. People are happy to contribute and help you create the best product possible. Uh, when you write your abstract, make sure it's detailed with uh, a good story. What's the problem? What's the solution? 
who is this for, and make sure you highlight where you have spoken before so that they know that you have um, experience speaking. Uh, make sure you submit before the deadline, so that way you can read people's comments. You know, you could even tweet uh, to make sure that people see it's there and ask for people to comment. And then you can use that feedback again to tweak your abstract up until the last minute. Again, make sure you submit on time because we don't accept late submissions. And uh, again, we as um, the Drupal Association are a resource for you. Uh, you can reach out to me, reach out to your account managers. And if you are looking to find a partner to present with, um, ask us about Partner Connect. And if you would like to buy a session, reach out and we'll let you know all the details. Um, on the right, you can see account managers. I'm sure you probably know who your account manager is in their email, but I put it here just in case. And um, hopefully that really helps. Again, you have until now and February 29th to submit your session submission. And that concludes how to write a winning abstract. Uh, are there any questions? Thanks, Megan. Yeah, we have had a comment and a question uh, come in since I last interrupted you. Okay. Uh, the first the comment was a little bit of a reply to uh, the question about involving the community. Um, and basically, uh, he's saying in the past, we've had uh, community voting on sessions, but it didn't actually end up yielding the most helpful results. Um, you know, the, the part of the reason that we have the track chairs not is not just because they're you know content experts. They also um, know what to look for as far as presenter skills, um, and so that is a, a pretty valuable resource that you can't necessarily get through a voting system. Um, so that that was a bit of the comment. Um, and then we had somebody ask a question here uh, saying, it seems like in the past there's been a preference for pretty narrow topics, i.e. issues with using Twig for theming responsive Drupal 8 sites versus general sites um, like front-end challenges with Drupal theming. Is there any truth to that, that uh, the narrower topics seem to be preferred? Huh, that is a good question. Um, you know, I really can't speak to that, but um, Brendan, if you can pass that person, I can't see the who's asking questions, but if you can connect me with them, um, I can definitely do some follow-up. Sure, yeah, I'm happy to connect um, yeah. you with them. And I'd also say that as you are thinking about your session and which track you want to speak to, I would also suggest you ask that question of the track chair. Are they looking for something broader? Are they looking for something narrow? Um, because they might have a personal preference of, of what gives the most education, right? If you go deep or if you go a mile wide. Great. Well, that is the end of the list of questions I have here. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I hope this helped. It was the first time we gave this presentation. So if you have feedback, just let us know. Um, and I will be sending the slides and the recording out to you shortly. Um, and again, you'll have our contact information and links to all the resources I mentioned. So feel free to uh, follow up with me and take advantage of all the information I provided. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your time today.